everyone, welcome back to Rocking the Spectrum. So in this video, I wanted to do something a little different. And I wanted to talk about books, specifically books about autism. Um, I personally love to read books, but unfortunately what I like and enjoy to read is romance books or sci-fi books. So anything that is actually nonfiction, um, even if it pertains to something that I love or like that I really want to learn about, like space or autism and things like that, for some reason my brain can't it doesn't it gets distracted easily so i can read them i prefer to get um the books that are really um educational and something that i really need to understand and not just read but actually process i prefer as an audiobook so um i have a few books that i have read or am reading or um i thought was enjoyable and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Um, we will also be discussing um, diets because a lot of these books talk about um, how diets uh, affect our kids. So I'll go into that as well. And I know um, some of you guys have questions about Christian's diet, um, if he's in a certain diet, what he can and cannot eat. So we'll go into that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of the first books that I um, got and that I read was actually a gift from my cousin. Um, I've mentioned her before. She, um, her child is also on the spectrum. Her child is older than my son. So um, I went to her and I asked her, you know, like, if you have any advice, I just recently got a diagnosis. And she was kind enough to um, send me over um, a book that she found very beneficial. It's Healing and Preventing Autism. It's the book by Jenny McCarthy and the doctor um, that she says helped her son a lot so this book i think is a little controversial because she kind of says that her son got cured that he doesn't have autism anymore which if you ask me my opinion is you can't cure autism and i don't think it's something that i mean it's my opinion but autism doesn't need to be cured i think the that you can definitely look into things that will help with behaviors help make your your child's life easier better but um i mean i'm not looking for a cure you know what i want for my son specifically is for him to live a happy healthy life so if diets that claim to have cures or like stop behaviors i don't believe that that's the case reading books like this um they they talk a lot about what you can do to help what she did to cure her son which like i said i don't think that's the case um, it talks about vaccines, it talks about vitamins, it talks about um, different medical procedures, different um, like um, things that you can do, expensive things. Um, it's a bunch of stuff, you know. It's nice to read. It talks about vaccines, but I mean, I don't... When I just got the diagnosis, I, w I wanted to, uh, to absorb everything and anything, so I tried reading it. I don't even think I finished it. It was beneficial... Um, I thought it was beneficial in the beginning and it got me to try the gluten-free, casein-free diet. Um, I did try it for about a month and a half or so. The thing about that is it's, it's, it's very, very hard, um, especially when you have a picky eater. My son is super picky. He only eats certain foods. He doesn't like the color green, like I can't put anything green in front of him. He doesn't like certain textures. Um, a smell will make him not even try it. Um, some foods that I know he loves, he will not even put in his mouth for whatever reason. Maybe I used a different seasoning or something. I have to kind of force him to open his mouth and try it. And once he tries it, he likes it. So changing his diet has always been very hard. Getting him to try new foods has always been very hard. But we did give it a go. I remember it was right when, he, when we got the diagnosis, like I said, when I first got the book. And we did the... The, I bought a bunch of foods that I know he likes. Like it's easy to get foods without dairy nowadays and gluten without without gluten. So we tried, you know, macaronis. We tried pastas. We tried um, making all the foods that I know he likes, but without um, gluten and dairy. So like pizzas, when we would go out, go out to eat, we were asked for gluten free and dairy free, and he wouldn't touch it for some reason. Like I don't know the smell or the taste or like something about it like if he would try it, he would spit it out i guess like it was chewy or something i don't really know um so it was always a battle with him he just wouldn't eat the foods and my son is very stubborn like if you tell me hold wait it out and um, he'll eat it he wouldn't you know and it would just cause more behaviors which i was okay with but within that time that i saw that we were trying it i didn't see any changes to his to his behaviors and i think i'm i'm forgetting to point out that one of the main reasons why i wanted to try it also is because he, we did think he had stomach problems. Um, he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming, but since he is nonverbal, I didn't know what was causing the pain. And now I believe that it was the groin pains because he still on and off suffers with 
with pain, but I, I feel like he's communicating more to me that it's in his legs and not his stomach. Back then, we would think that it was in his stomach. So we tried it specifically for that, and it, was, and, um, it wasn't making a difference, to be honest. Um, once we kind of stopped with the gluten, free we still continued with the dairy free because um, we are a family that enjoys almond milk regardless so we don't really have milk in here um, cow's milk we usually use almond milk um so we continued with that we just in case because i did think he was sensitive to, to like um dairy we continued to try to avoid heavy creams like ice cream um, um shakes uh, yogurts we try to avoid that just in case it upset his stomach and um, anytime that we we would like incorporate some form of dairy like ice cream we did feel like he would get like wake up screaming for some reason I don't know if he was or wasn't we still don't give him that much dairy like sometimes you know he'll have like macaroni and things like that but straight up dairy he doesn't like milk he doesn't eat that often or yogurts he doesn't eat that often but I wouldn't say that he that it is that um, Hi, buddy. You want something? Good job bringing me the iPad. Come here. What do you want? Bagel. You want bagel? Okay, so like I said, we started that diet when he was first diagnosed, so we're jumping forward pretty much two years. It's been two years since he got diagnosed, and um, we do incorporate some, a little bit of milk with when, when, it ha when it's like cheese. He still doesn't drink milk on its own. Um, he has yogurt once in a while. Um, and and it doesn't seem to affect them anymore like I like I thought dairy did in the beginning It doesn't seem to affect them gluten has never affected him now the whole point of this diet I believe is because they, they say that it helps with behaviors now I didn't see any changes in Christian The only way that I think you would see a change is if there is a sensitivity to a food and Our kids the, the reason that they're behaving a certain way or have a certain um, Autistic behavior is for a reason. So if your son is in son or daughter is in pain and it is because of an ear infection, and that ear infection is, is, is making them hurt, right? So when you're hurting and you can't communicate it, you're gonna lash out, you're gonna not want to do this, or you're not gonna want demands, you're just thinking about the pain. So if you cure the pain, you're, you're curing that behavior because he's no longer in pain, so he's not lashing out, being aggressive, and this and that. Same thing with the dietary sensitivity. If you're taking away a certain thing that is causing gut issues, you're gonna um, take away some of the behaviors that were going on because of that pain. So I think it's okay to give it a go. I mean, I, I, when I was, when he was first diagnosed, I wanted to try everything and I think that's okay. But it's also okay to stop if you don't see improvement or to stop if you don't, if it's just not in the right, in the, in the if it's just not right for your family because it is expensive. It is, um, you know, a little bit of time consuming because you're trying to get them to eat something that maybe they weren't eating before. I'm not saying it wouldn't be beneficial, so maybe give it a go. You know, that's just our story right now. We did try the diet when he was first diagnosed and it just didn't work out. Um, so there you go. That's the first book. Another book that I remember um, reading, getting immediately was um, this sign language book, which goes into another question that I hear often. Um, another question that I see often by, um, from subscribers is, how did we get started with sign language? And I remember just, you know, like researching online and looking into like how he can communicate. And my, my take on things has always been like, if he doesn't talk, that's okay, but I need him to be able to communicate because that, that is, that's awful when there's no way to try to get his words out his, because there's a little person in there, you know, he might not seem like he's paying attention or, or trying to interact or even communicate, but he's always trying to communicate, whether it's by tapping me, pulling me, um, trying to get my attention. He's always trying to communicate a need or a want. So I wanted to, to try to get something to make that easier you know so baby sign language basics was what i got and as you can see i have a bunch of little um post-it notes because i wanted to um keep track of the ones that i wanted to learn i remember being at work when um because i worked when he first got diagnosed or right before and i would on my break or whenever there was a, a break in between whatever i was doing i would go through the book and put a little note to what i wanted to practice and i would do like a little test on myself so like what's more okay and try to remember more what's eat what's um all done what's um ball you know so I, I would always quiz myself and then i would quiz my husband to try to get him and i would write the words on my little um blackboard more bread more show me more more good job so we were practicing we would practice sign language first on ourselves to try to remember it and then once we got a few down we tried to um get one at a time so 
The first one I think we tried to do was more. From what I remember, the first one that he got down also was more, and it took a lot of practice, always repeating it, so hand over hand, so he would never just go more on it by himself. We always, if he wanted something or he wanted more of something, we would go behind him, like Hugo would get behind him, grab his hands and do more. Oh, good job, more. And after a long time, he finally got it on his own, and like not necessarily by himself, like knowing that he needed to say more, but with me saying, do you want more, and seeing it, he would do it himself. So that's what I would recommend, you know, like, you know, grab a book, study the, the signs first, memorize them, get them down by yourself, and then do one at a time. And then once your child has one sign down, move on to the next, and always continue rotating them because it's easy for my son to lose the sign that he learned. So I always try to get him to, to practice the, one that's, the ones that he does know. And it's okay if he, if he kind of like does it a lot, like for things that he's not supposed to do it, like if he is requesting food and it's doing more, um, that's okay. Um, just kind of like redirect them. Like if you already taught him to say eat, to sign eat, and he's signing more, you could say, yes, you want more bread. You want to eat more bread. So just kind of like practice it. It'll it'll become more of a of an easy flow and not as awkward once you just continue doing it. So this is a good book. Any sign language book I would think is good. Or even online, you can Google like each sign that you want to learn and they'll show you pictures or even videos. So it's easy to get free information. Um, Another book, um, I have some on, on uh, my phone that I do through Audible. One that I really enjoyed was Neural Tribes, and I'll try to put a picture if I can of the book. Um, if not, it's Neural Tribes, The Legacy of Autism. So this one is very interested, interesting. It's pretty much the history of autism. It, it talks about who discovered the diagnosis of autism. It was two doctors and it was like autism and then there was Asperger's and they thought they, could, they discovered two completely different diagnoses, but they were pretty much the same thing. But like, as we all know, um, autism is different. It's like a spectrum, you know, your kid may do this, another kid may do that. They all have similar traits, but it, nothing, nobody is ever pretty much the same. So they both thought they had different um, diagnoses that they discovered new um, conditions. And it also talks about how how people from the past, of course, you know, we think of autism as something that was recently discovered, but the traits that we see now, people can go back and look at the behaviors and um, characteristics of famous people from the past and say that person more than likely had autism, you know? So it's very interesting to, to like talk about Eisenstein and talk about um, uh, former presidents and how they feel that they had these characteristics. Um, it's super interesting. And it also talks about how poorly people were treated, about how they were taken to psychiatric wards, how they were killed, how Nazis would, um, would uh, deal with persons with disabilities. It's super interesting. And it also talks about now the, 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 um, the current diagnosis of people here, how we treat people, how it's like just everything. So it's, it's just the history and it, it um, goes over all things autism. So it's super fascinating. Books that I find extremely, um, it makes me emotional and it opens my eyes and it makes me want to like change the way that I am are, are things that are written by people on the spectrum. So a really good book is so the reason i jump is a book written by a 13 year old boy and he pretty much is answering questions that people are asking him i want to know about what they feel and i know that every kid is different but it it, it really answers a lot of questions that i have and I, I really want answers to so maybe all of this doesn't pertain to my son but i love just getting a peek inside of their brain so this is definitely a must and it's an easy read you know i can read this one and i'll have to listen to it because it's not explaining something, something scientific to me. It's just letting me see into his brain. So I really, really like this one. Um, these two are actually two that I got pretty much when I got the sign language book. And I just couldn't get into them. Uh, like I said, it's not easy for me to, to like really, really focus and pay attention and process what is being said for some reason when it's um, very scientific or like very, you know, like I'm teaching you something. I prefer to listen to it. So I actually got these for... I, I got these through the Audible book app, so I'm going to definitely look into these. Um, this one, The Sensory Child Gets Organized, sounds interesting, and 10 Things Every Child... Oh, you know what? I like... I did read this one through the um, audiobook book. It is very interesting. Um, she pretty much is a mom of a child that is now grown up, going to college, and she explains everything that she did, everything that she went through, and how she helped her son. Um, so it's a nice um, look into another parent's mind. I really enjoyed this one. 
Um, another one that I found really, really amazing, Carly's voice. I think we've all heard about Carly Fleischman. I think I'm probably saying that wrong. You know, she she really, her story was interesting. Um, the book is about the dad pretty much talking about the, um, the family dynamic, their life story, going in depth about like, you know, like ABA therapy, how they thought their daughter was or like wasn't. And like, you know, it's easy, like I've said, for people to look into our, look at our children from a distance and see a disability and see like, he doesn't talk, she doesn't talk, she's acting crazy, she's disabled, you know, all these stims. It's easy for them to pass judgment and think it's an empty shell, you know, and as, as much as it sucks, that is a, a thought that people have, unfortunately, or like, it's a waste, put them in. I've, I've had comments, random comments, you know, I don't take to heart, like, you know, if you don't want to get bullied, these kids need to be put away. They, they don't, they don't have a place here. They're just wasting space, put them where they need to be and their misery, like awful comments, you know, like, so I know that people pass judgment without knowing, you know, our children. So I loved seeing how this dad this whole family assumed that their their child Christian what's wrong so they thought that she did she you know she maybe wasn't understanding you know they probably also were pretty much not understanding that she had so much more to offer you know so she finally got a way to communicate she finally was able to explain to them, I'm right here, you know, like I understand so much more than you guys even know. Um, one of the pa of the chapters was like when she finally discovered that she could um, communicate via typing, you know, how she wrote down in pain and it was the first time that she ever expressed something um, by herself and like pretty much spoke to them. So the whole book was amazing and then in the end there's like a q a and they ask her a lot of questions and she's brilliant and she lets us into her mind again kind of like the um the reason i jump book i love all books that let me look into somebody's um way of being and reasoning and why they do this and that and she is smart like she'll let you know like if you ask her hey why does my son um have to block out noise you know like and she'll respond something like it's not him blocking out noise it's him canceling out the noise that is preventing him from finishing the puzzle so she explains so many things and i don't want to like explain the whole books to you guys these are just it's a good book and it's a book that you should either listen to or read because it's very very interesting so these are the books that i have read so far and i want to read so many more i think it's crucial that we um do our research and not just research but just like pay attention and listen to um people on the spectrum they have a lot to say they want to they want to be understood and they want to give you tools to understand them so i want to absorb as much information as i can hold on Bubba. come here I'll give you something right now so I just wanted to make a quick video just talking to you guys about books and I hope you guys have read some of these let me know what you guys have read or what you guys are interested in reading um, I would love to hear from you guys um, and yeah I just thought this would be an interesting book so I'm gonna go feed my son now he's probably super hungry just finished ABA and I will talk to you guys super soon say bye say bye bye wait good job bye guys